Good morning, everyone. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Today, I have what will, I hope, be a simple and short message, but it's a very important one. And in part, I want to update those who listen to this channel about certain things concerning this channel. But I also want to go to the Word of God and, and speak to you about why I'm making some changes with this channel. So, as I always state in the beginning of my videos, this channel is for Christian women. And Christian women are a very small percentage of those who consider themselves to be followers or believers in Jesus Christ. And the reason for that is, is that the deceiver some time ago entered into the Christian, uh, the Christian congregations and brought forward many heresies that deceive people. These heresies include that you can be saved by saying a sinner's prayer, which is found nowhere in the scripture that you can invite Jesus into your heart and that that saves you. And that also is not found in the scripture. So, uh, and there's many of these, and I'm not going into that in this particular video. I've gone into that uh, kind of thing in many other videos. And if you have questions, feel free to write to me. My email is in the description box below. But there are many people who believe themselves to be Christians who have fallen for a heresy. And they think the way of salvation is something that doesn't save you. The other thing that is an important issue is that many people don't know who Jesus Christ is. And they worship a false Babylonian God known as God the Son or God, also God, the Holy Spirit, and through the operation of witchcraft, which is to, to make a spell by inverting language, turning it upside down, the meaning is changed. Now, there is no God the Son, there is no God the Holy Spirit, there is only one God, one true God, that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was praying to and spoke of. So in John 17, verse 3, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, prayed to his Father, and he referred to his Father as the only true God. Now, again, I'm not going into that in this particular video. If you have questions about who God is and who his Son is, please feel free to email me. The way that Christians know the truth is to read the Word of God, and the aforementioned enemies of God who infiltrated the Christian congregations, in part what they did was to retranslate the Bible for you. And they did it from, from Hebrew and Greek texts that are not correct texts. So they did it from the, um, from the, um, the sources being the Vatican and Alexandria which were hotbeds of paganism and Gnosticism. So these, these texts that they're translating uh, the Bible are corrupted Greek and Hebrew. Bibles that are the NIV, the NKJV, the um, RSV, and so forth. So there are hundreds at this point, hundreds of translations have all been translated from the false, the corrupt and false Greek and Hebrew texts. And for that reason, another thing that people who have um, infiltrated Christian congregations have done is to say that you can't understand the Word of God unless you go to the Greek and Hebrew. And then they go to that false Greek and Hebrew and because you, or I, or anyone who's living in this time does not understand Greek and Hebrew to the point where we are 
better able than the people who originally translated God's word for us in the King James Version of the Holy Bible. That we don't know Greek and Hebrew, and the enemy, the serpent, knows this. So when people represent themselves as religious authorities and present to you an understanding that they say is superior because they have a degree from a seminary, they mislead most people into believing that Jesus is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was a deity separate from his Father, which is a heresy. It's not true. There is only one God. And those, of course, who read the Bible, the King James Bible, the only Bible in English that is God's Word, People who read the King James Version know it's a very simple fact that there is one God. He begat a son in the womb of a woman. And God who knew all things when he created the wor world by the power of his spirit and his word. So when he spoke, he spoke the world into being. And he knew because he's God. The end from the beginning. And when he says in his scripture that Jesus Christ was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world, that's because God knew the end from the beginning. And the lamb was slain on a certain day at Calvary. And even though God knew that that would happen and God is outside of time, when the scripture says that the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world, it did not mean that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, had already shed his blood. People who are Christians sometimes fall into to heresies and making mistakes because they listen to religious authorities. The practice of looking to an expert looking to a priest, looking to an educated seminarian, a, a pastor, to tell you what God's word says is a practice known as the doctrine or the deeds of the Nicolaitans that Jesus spoke of in Revelation 2 in particular. So the deeds of the, the Nicolaitans and the doctrine of the Nicolaitans that Jesus says he hates is the idea of going to some other human expert rather than going to the Word of God and in prayer seeking the face of God and having him instruct you through his Word and through his Spirit. The practice these days is so widespread that most people are deceived because they don't go to the source. They go to a man or a woman to tell them what the Word of God says and what to do about this or that problem in their life, this or that dilemma. And when this happens, for the most part, they are deceived. That's not what this video is about. This video is addressed to Christians, Christian women in particular, women who are saved according to the scripture, baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of their sins and filled with the Holy Spirit of God, or seeking it, but at least at this point, having had your sins remitted in the waters of baptism and now perhaps waiting for the promise of the Holy Spirit, which is promised unto those who obey the gospel. This message is for Christian women who have had their sins remitted in the waters of baptism. And what I want to address is I want to address a problem that many women have. And these days, it's the practice of most people to believe a lie, and that lie being the theological doctrine of the Nicolaitans, that you can't understand God's word for yourself, and you can't understand what Jesus Christ wants you to do 
unless you go to someone who will explain it to you. The problem with this is, is that if you are following this channel, which, which I speak the Word of God from the Word of God, to the best of my ability, I don't add anything, I don't take anything away, I merely speak to my sisters in Jesus Christ the truth of God's Word, and also to the world, that perhaps other people might come into the kingdom of God by obeying the gospel. After we obey the gospel, though, we need to continue in God's word. That's what Jesus Christ said to the believers, the Jewish believers. He said to them, if ye continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, many people these days, while they have had their sins remitted in the waters of baptism, and they have either received the Holy Ghost or, or are waiting for that promise, they have fallen for a trick of the enemy, and it's this. They hear something that someone says from the Word of God, and they, in their heart they know that they're not being obedient. And rather than get on their knees and ask the Lord Jesus Christ to intervene, to, to help them with it. First, to forgive them of any trespass against God by violation of his law. But also to ask Jesus Christ to do in them a work, to show them the way so that they can become obedient. Instead of doing that, the enemy comes along and says, oh, He's, and he's the accuser, by the way. He comes in and says, oh, you're not, you're not measuring up. You're not measuring up. And he might present to you various scenarios. He might say, you need deliverance. There's a problem. You're having nightmares. You're being attacked by spiritual entities. So you need deliverance. Get on Google and find yourself a deliverance minister. Or... Get on Google and see what people recommend. See what some human being recommends that you do if you're having these kinds of issues. And you will find a plethora of people who will tell you various things that you need to um, say this prayer that they've written, that you need to cancel spiritual accounts or spiritual agreements that you made before you were saved. People might tell you that you you need to uh, find a Christian counselor who can guide you. They might tell you that you need to confess your sins to, to someone or go to a deliverance minister who will cast a devil out of you. And all of these things are an operation of the enemy trying to get you to forget that your sins were remitted and that now the promises contained in God's word are for you. And if you make a mistake, you can seek the face of God and ask him to forgive you in Jesus' name and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Does this happen like a lightning bolt out of heaven? No, it doesn't. Because when God does a work in you, he does it from the inside out. He's not going to make you as satan's minions do into a robot he is going to transform your heart and there's one way that this can happen and that is the point of this video there is one way to be cleansed of unrighteousness there is one way to overcome your flesh there is one way to enter the kingdom of god and that is jesus christ when we encounter these kinds of dilemmas, and we all do, they happen to me, they happen to everyone, because we are all on a spiritual battlefield. No one but you can fight your spiritual battles for you, though. I can't fight your spiritual battles for you, and neither can anyone else. The only one that can give you the power to overcome your flesh, the world, and the devil, 
is Jesus Christ. And how do we do that? We do that by calling on his name and dwelling with him. You know, the whole reason Jesus Christ died on the cross, the Son of God shed his precious, innocent blood on the cross, was so that you and I could live with him forever and praise God forever for his loving kindness and his mercy. This was why Jesus did this. Because God always wanted people who love him. And the enemy wants to come along and say, yeah, you were saved and now you're still sinning, so now you're condemned. And instead of seeking the Lord Jesus Christ in his word and in prayer, these days many Christians get on YouTube or on Google or on Facebook and ask everybody for their opinion, including me, by the way, what to do. And this is incorrect. If you're not saved, if you have not obeyed the gospel, you need someone to speak the gospel to you. If you're a new Christian and you're unfamiliar with God's word, you might need someone, such as myself, to show you in the scripture where you might begin or to, to help you understand how a Christian walks. However, no one can walk that walk for you. Only you can walk that walk. The reason I'm mentioning this is it has become a very serious issue in the body of Christ. I'm talking about Christians here, where they're not relying on Jesus. They're not seeking him in prayer. They're not humbly asking him to show them the way to make them clean. Instead, they're, they've gone back, they've fallen back into the practice of the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which is to look for a professor, an educated person, a, a religious authority to tell them what to do. And this, of course, is mistaken. And if you do it, even if you're asking someone who has a relationship, a very deep relationship with Jesus Christ and is filled with the Holy Ghost, that this is like unto standing outside of a restaurant on a cold and wintry day. And you're standing outside in, in the cold, shivering, and you're looking in the window inside to a restaurant. And there's a wonderful banquet there. And people are, are speaking to one another and having fellowship and eating good food and drinking fine, clean water and instead of entering in to that banquet, what you're doing is you're on the outside looking in and you're calling someone up inside on your cell phone and saying, I don't know what to do. I'm cold. I'm hungry. The thing is that all someone can do is tell you, come on in. And the way that we come in is to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's first and foremost. And then thereafter, we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We don't have to have a deliverance minister because Jesus Christ set us free. He set us free from bondage to sin and death, to wickedness, to, to being in subjection to devils. You see? That said, there are many Christians who need to be cleaned up, and there are things in their lives that they don't yet see. And perhaps they might hear on this channel or somewhere else something that they need to do to clean up their life. For example, if a woman doesn't know that she should be praying and prophesying with her head covered, then she needs to hear that somewhere and hear it from the Word of God, look in the Word of God, see that that is true, and then obey it. It doesn't do you any good at all to listen to this channel or to listen to someone else who speaks the Word of God to you if you're not reading the Word for yourself. 
And there might be a very tiny percentage of you who are physically unable to read because you're blind. Anyone else who is able to read text on their phone is able to read the Word of God. And to only hear it is not enough. To hear it and then open the Word and read it because... If you're listening to someone else, you're partaking of watching their eating a banquet, and you are not eating it for yourself. And if something were to happen to that person, you would lose your connection to God. The other thing is that when we follow people and we are not familiar with the Word of God, it's very easy for anyone to come along and say, oh, that's not what the Word of God says. The Word of God says this. Don't believe the Word of God that, that maybe you're hearing on the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel. But instead, listen to this interpretation. That's why I encourage people to open the Word of God and read it with me. I also encourage people by placing in the description box all the scriptures that I and referring to in the course of a video because the whole point is to show you the way and the way isn't the earth and vessels YouTube channel the way is Jesus Christ where is he he's in his word he will be in you if you dwell with him the way that we dwell with Jesus Christ is we read the Word of God and we obey it and then we are given a good understanding. The Word of God says, A good understanding have all those that do his commandments. The Word of God also says that those who do his commandments have right to enter in the gates of this city and to eat from the tree of life. That's what Jesus Christ says. Jesus Christ says, If you continue in my word, ye are my disciples indeed. If you continue in my word, not if you follow this or that person on YouTube. What I would say is that the enemy wants you to fall back into the, the deceptions of the enemy. And instead, perhaps instead of going to a Catholic priest and, and, and making that man your representative of Jesus Christ, maybe you'll go to this or that theologian or this or that YouTube channel or this or that Facebook page. But what you're really doing then is you're committing idolatry and you're seeking for the truth in the wrong place. It's okay to listen to this channel or to the very few other YouTube channels that speak the Word of God, who open up the Word of God, the King James Version of the Holy Bible, and read it to you and give you some guidance as to how a Christian behaves and so on. But don't make that your God because your God is the Word of God. The Word in the beginning was the word in the, let's go to john chapter 1 and verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god there is one source for life let's go let's go to john chapter 6 and verse 63 it is the spirit that quickeneth or that giveth the life that's what quickening means it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profiteth nothing the words that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life this flesh here profiteth nothing and your flesh profiteth not nothing and the flesh of any man or woman profiteth nothing. The spirit is what quickeneth. The words 
the words that Jesus Christ spoke, the word of God, they are spirit and they are life. The one true God is the word. The word was God. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was the Word made flesh. He had, he was Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The scripture says, In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The Godhead is referring to the Spirit and Word of God. The deity of the Father was in the Son and still is in the Son. And that same Holy Spirit that was in Jesus Christ, the Spirit of Jesus Christ, the Father, is in Christians. And what is that Spirit? It is His Word. And if you are a Christian, if you have taken the name of Jesus Christ by being baptized in His name, now you can be a vessel for the same Word and the same Holy Spirit that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was when he was on the earth. And Christians carry that same Spirit. And as he walked, we also walk. We are strangers in a strange land because our kingdom is not of this world. And the things that we speak to people aren't from our own flesh. They're from God's word. If I'm speaking the word of God to you, I urge you, I beg you to open up the word of God and read the word of God with me. Look up the scriptures in the description box below. Because this is how we obey Jesus Christ. This is how we know what he wants us to do. This is how we know how to be faithful. This is how we know his promises and his goodness. And this this channel will benefit you nothing if you don't do that. Finally, I want to say that um, henceforth, for, for at least for a season, I am not going to open the comment section. All comments, every comment will be subject to my approval because there has been a, a an an increase of the incidence of people using the comment section to bring religious confusion into uh, the realm of this channel of which I am the administrator. And for that reason, at least for a season, if you want to make a comment, feel free to do so. I will see it and, and I, I can either have that be publicly posted or not. If you want however, to contend and, and be involved in striving and debate. Your comment will not be posted. If you have a question, I want you to use my email. If you want to have a discussion with me about something, I want you to use my email. Because these kinds of things should not be taking place as if this YouTube ministry for Christian women that is also a vessel of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. The comment section here is not for people who want to contend, who want to dispute, who want to cast doubt, who want to interrupt my answers to the Christian sisters who have sincere questions. For that reason, if you want to comment, feel free to do so. I will see it. If you have a question, please email me. If you want to have a discussion with me about something, then please email me. And for a season, the comment section is not going to be made public because it has become a practice of many to treat the comment section as if it's a, a, uh, a social media platform where everybody gets to put in their two cents. And you see, this is a Christian ministry and we hold to the Word of God. If you're not familiar with the Word of God, I am perfectly um, delighted to communicate with you privately in an email type situation where I can show you something from God's Word. Or perhaps 
Your question is something that many would benefit from, and I'll make a public video about that. But the comment section has devolved into being kind of a free-for-all where, and not everybody, I'm not accusing everyone of doing this, but where basically what people are doing is they have doubt because they've been indoctrinated with theology, and they ask a question with a preconceived notion of what they think is correct. And they're not really asking in sincerity, and they're not really telling me who they are or where they are in their walk with Jesus Christ, whether or not they have had their sins remitted. And so for me to attempt to answer you in that format is incorrect, because I don't know where you are in your walk. And that is why I'm asking everyone to contact me in my email, and I'll be happy to speak to you. But as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, as all Christians are, I am responsible, first of all, to make sure people are truly saved before I start talking to them about how to overcome this or that problem in their life. Because if you're not saved, no counsel I give you is going to be of any value whatsoever. And if you're a Christian, if you've been saved, then for the most part what you need me for is maybe to nudge you towards the scripture, nudge you to that one, but not to tell you how to walk, because Jesus Christ is in his word. He's in me, and he can be in you if you've been saved, if your sins have been remitted. Jesus Christ can be in you, and the way that we do that is we, we eat his flesh, the word made flesh. We eat the word that brings life, the words that he speaks, they are spirit and they are life. And if you're not eating them, you're going to be hungry and out in the cold. And then the enemy has you exactly where he wants you because now he can humiliate you. He can condemn you. He can say, see, you're failing in this area. You're failing in that. And the answer is not to come to me and ask me what to do. The answer is to open up the word of God on your knees and in prayer and ask Jesus Christ what to do. And I, I do know, I can promise you, that he will show you. So uh, I hope this message has been clear and edifying to all of you. And uh, I hope that all of us can reorient ourselves towards walking with God and not mistaking seeking a religious authority rather than seeking Jesus Christ and mistaking asking other people about what we should do as fellowship because that's not fellowship. Fellowship is when you're walking with God by dwelling in his word and obeying him and you're with other people, human beings, who are also doing that. And then you can share in praising God and share in his word and delight in his presence as he walks in your midst. That is fellowship. It is not fellowship to look to a crowd of people on Facebook to encourage you, to, to tell, speak the word of God to you, to show you the way to go. That's not fellowship. That is making other human beings in the place of God, which is idolatry. So as Christians, we have a relationship with the Lord, and our fellowship is with other people who have a relationship with the Lord. And if you're falling into condemnation, if you're feeling humiliated, if you're feeling like a failure, that is a clue that you must get on your knees and seek the Lord and ask him what's going on. Ask him why. Look in his word. So feel free to email me and you can comment too. I'll see your comment, but no one else will. I look forward to hearing from you if you have a question or a comment. I remain here for you to serve you as we all walk towards the kingdom of God. 
praise the Lord, and may his word go forth today and bless many. Amen.